Johnny's like, if you don't buy that thing, I will. Everything's TIG welded. Oh, what is that? Oh my lordy. Jeez, Ola. I turned it on, it had, I want to say 35,000 original miles on it. 35,000 miles, you son of a <laughs> bitch. <laughs> you son of a <laughs> bitch. Hey guys, so we're with Vernon Escobel. Esquibel. 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 We're gonna check this truck out. This truck made some waves when we were um, at Hell Track. This truck's really cool. It stood out really great over there. Um, first hand, we seen it, it, it crushed it. It really yeah. amazed everybody. Um, and hey, he was the mystery driver, man. Everybody was like, who's that guy? Who's that, who's that, you know? Um, and it was funny, we actually put it on the Hell Track episode. Like, who is that guy? Hey, four door Tacoma guy. <laughs> yeah. That's we funny. wanna know who you are. Like, we wanna see the truck. So I'm not the Toyota guy. I'm not the anything expert over here. But Evan really, really loves Tacomas. So I'm gonna probably have to hand it off to my boy. I, I fanboyed over this thing, as you guys would know from my Instagram posts. But here, let's let's just get right into it. So tell us how you came across this thing, where you found it. So I started looking, I was on Race Desert, I was on Craigslist, and this truck had popped up and I kind of passed over it because I figured it was probably a kid's truck, wasn't built right. And I kept going back and looking at this truck on Craigslist because it was my favorites. And finally I called Johnny Dominguez and I was like, let's go check this truck out. It's in Fallbrook, it was about an hour away from where we live. And we get up there, it's in a carport, it's covered by a tarp or like a, a car cover. Like the guy just packed stuff all around it and it was just sitting there. It was like a barn find. I sat in it, I fit beautifully. That's awesome. It was caged, everything looked immaculate. I could barely see the motor. I, could, I had to climb in from the passenger side. No, oh, wow. And climb over to sit in it just so I could see. Oh, really? So anyways, Johnny's like, we leave and Johnny's like, if you don't buy that thing, I will. Yeah. So I made the guy an offer. The talent I was looking at was 35 grand. It was way cheaper than that. Mm -hmm. And wow. I borrowed a buddy's yeah. trailer because I didn't have one at the time, Sean Stoddard, and went and loaded it on the trailer and got it home and started messing with it. Turned out the neutral safety switch was unplugged. So I plugged that back in, the thing fired right up. And Dude, then there was, a, there was a loose wow. ground behind the, uh, the fuse panel that was grounding out to the cage, which was causing the starter to engage. Mm. Isolated that, and then I had to get rims and tires on it. It was the first thing I had to do because- For sure, it sat for moved. a while. Yeah, yeah. sat, the tires are all cracked. It had the, the first gen BFGs on it. I want to say it was parked for maybe two years. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. That's a pretty good and amount of time. I don't know how long he drove it, but I can tell you when I got the battery in it and turned it on, it had, I want to say 35,000 original miles on 35,000 miles, you son of a <laughs> Well, so, <laughs> you son of a <laughs> so that, 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 that's crazy man. that is that is crazy crazy awesome story awesome find so let's get into details all right so, so wait, it's an yeah. eight inch cool over in the front okay the rear i know for sure is at 20. okay i would guess that this is this is probably closer to 16 to 17 inches of wheel travel and i believe since these are a dual rate these might be a bigger than a an eight inch shock probably tens okay um and and plus why they're they're mounted so high but so you got so you got 2.5 coilover and a 2.5 was a triple bypass, triple bypass in the front. Um, nice dude, nice big beefy two and a half inch bump stop. You got it double strapped here, um, the clevis. So this is adjustable. When the straps stretch, mm -hmm. you can tighten this back down, and uh, then okay. yeah, and, and keep the, the and same keep them limit. and keep them the same limit because um, no these do stretch out over okay. a year or so. Um, that or you can adjust how much down travel you have right. with this clevis, which is really nice. Gotcha. So you said the guy that originally built this truck passed away. That's what I heard. So the guy I bought the truck from, he said he was a welder by trade and it shows on the truck mm -hmm. if you, if, once you see it. Yeah. And that 
he had heard that he'd passed away, which is really unfortunate because I would love to meet the guy who built this. Thing. Right, right, and be able to get all the yeah, and all know the everything about it. Right, I don't, I don't know anything. Some aftermarket hubs on here. Yeah, and I've so had we don't those know apart, what hubs those are, but I don't know what they are. Um, you've had them apart. I've had them apart just to grease in the service. Okay, a fabricated spindle upright, super clean. Everything's TIG welded on this thing, which is like hours and hours and hours. All right, well let's move to the back, dude. So, um, so we got a four link in the rear. So here's here's a batch, R and H long travel. And I've looked that up, and I think that guy has sensed. Uh, his company's closed. Right, okay. So these are obviously his trailing arms, or their trailing arms. You said the back is strapped at 20? Strapped at 20, because I've had it on the forklift in my shop. So. Okay, so that one you're definitely be able to measure out. So we got a 2.5 coilover, and another 2.5, so another triple That's bypass. Triple bypass. Okay, got gotcha. you, right on. And another two and a half inch bump. Dude, these guys put, you know, they put big bumps on this thing. Big bumps. Yeah. And they, and you know, they work. When sh when it comes to shock stuff, usually the bigger the better. This was a custom touch I did here. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Because the front tire just yeah, it's just rocks. yeah. Uh huh. So I need to take it and have somebody actually rhino line it because uh, I think that's a I think that's just kind of a pre runner problem with yeah, everybody that has a pre runner and the front ends, you know, uh, quite a bit wider. Yeah, I'd then say uh, so. yeah, they just kick rocks and uh, chew up these rear fenders. But that's this was definitely a good helper. And then yeah, if you got, if you got a like legit rhino lined, yeah, it would definitely yeah, hold it would up definitely hold up better. way better. Yeah, for sure. And I did for you guys. I measured the links rear links okay and they are 48 inches 48 inch rear links yeah. which is on the smaller side mm -hmm. which is okay because this is overall it's a 122 inch wheelbase okay yeah so pretty short wheelbase yep. like 30 inches shorter than a, like a full-size yeah, truck and um, the front's 88 inches wide it's 88 it wide nice let's talk about wheel and tires so you got uh 35 inch tires and then these are the method nv uh 305 wheels matte black and then what kind of rear end you got so this is just a Toyota 8.4. So an 8.4 inch Toyota rear end. Obviously it's got some some trussing going on here. And it's holding up pretty good so far? Yeah, I've, I'm on my third set of gears. The first set of gears, for whatever reason, I think I had a drag race guy put them together and I think the mesh was too tight because mm. it was making a lot of noise yeah. on, on D-cell. So anyways, I got that worked out. Now it's got 529s. and. Other than that, I haven't had any problems with it. Right on, dude. Yeah, the Toyota rear ends are usually pretty stout for even for how small they are. Like an 8.4 is a pretty small rear end, but usually they're still pretty stout. And so this thing's fully caged all the way front to back. Really nice work, dude. I mean, this thing looks like the geometry is all really correct. Um, everything's TIG welded, which is just like really hard to find, especially in a truck that's just been sitting in somebody's backyard for a couple yeah, years. Unbelievable. I you was know? blown away yeah. when I saw it. Um, so we got back here, we got some batteries, you got a chase light, I see a little backup camera, which is nice to have, and something like this, you can't really see out yeah, of the back too well. Yeah, you can't see it all, yeah, yeah. So that, that is a nice little touch, and I, I did not do that, it was like that when I bought it. Right. I did put the, the rear tail light on it. Okay, right on. Nice, awesome. Um, you got your safety first fire extinguisher here. This double spare setup's kind of old school, this definitely takes it back to like a 2000 early 2000s kind of look, you know? Yeah, it definitely is a good look. I like it. I still haven't matched the methods in the rear because these tires were actually in pretty decent yeah. shape. Yeah, these are the old KO1s. Yeah, these are like brand new. Yeah. Still got like the nipples on them. Here's your jack, right, conveniently placed underneath the spare. Um, you got a little fuel cell here. Do you know what gallon fuel cell this is? So when I, I measured it out, I think it's around 18 gallons. Okay. And I, I can get a little over 200 miles out of it. We've got a trans cooler here. Trans cooler here. Okay. Fan. All right. Fan underneath. So it's sucking in air from the top and blowing it out the bottom. All your lines are nice and tucked up against the chassis here. So super clean. The more and more I look over, look over this thing, I'm just like, I don't like him. <laughs> just kidding, man. This is just such a sweet little truck and it's like so clean. It's like the perfect little daily driver, extreme daily driver Tacoma, you know? My kid's already telling me this is his This is his, yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%, 100%. If it's still legal. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what you gotta tell him. Yeah, we might have to swap it over to electric there, son, right. by the time you're in high school, right? Tesla swap. Uh, yeah, yeah, Tesla swap. Oh my God, that'd be crazy. <laughs> um, well, right on, let's, uh, there's yeah, something a little special under the under the hood. Let's let's, yeah. let's check out under the hood, man. So this is a 3.4 V6, correct? It is. Yeah, this is a reliable one. Not yeah. The, what is it? The 3.0. The 3.0. The the yeah, head they, they blew head gas. They blow head gas. It's every hundred miles. Cool hood. This is a fiberglass hood, right? It is. Yes. Got the scoop on there. 
There it is, 3.4, and then, oh, what is that? That's uh, a supercharger, TRD supercharger on this thing. With the underdog racing 2.1 pulley, so okay. we're just under 10 pounds of boost. 10 pounds of boost, and okay. She, she gets on the pipe and goes. Oh, hell yeah, man. 10 pounds of boost out of a root supercharger on a V6 is, uh, is pretty darn good. I probably wouldn't do much more than 12. Without, I was impressed. Yeah, without getting uh, getting kind of sketchy and trying to you know make this thing pop, but heck yeah, man! And this thing is like so clean. The TIG welds everywhere. Nice clean engine cage. Goes into the cab. Completes in the cab cage. Has your you have your your factory fender well still here. Um, on Toyotas, they're kind of known for this stuff kind of rotting out and oh, cracking. Yeah. The uh, core support's known for, especially on these Tacomas, like dying and disintegrating for some really? reason, yeah. But this is all in really good shape. Living in a lonely way. Yeah, I just got a big hole. Stock air box because I can just go buy 10 or 15 uh, air filters right, and just right. pop them in. And yeah, yeah. Not have to worry and about it. It's got a nice big hole here, so yeah. you know it's going to get all the air it needs it to does. get anyways, right? And then super clean, like retro bumper, dude. Super like, retro. yeah, like totally 2005. Baja bumper right here, Toyota Baja bumper, and then you got um, Baja designs. I'm guessing you put these I lights on. I put these on, yeah, the yeah. XL80s. I was going on a guy's trip, and they said you got to have lights, so I threw these guys on, and actually really impressed with them. Yeah, Baja it designs. Really well. um, yeah, shout out to Baja designs. I, I absolutely love all their stuff. Um, I usually recommend if you have a, a capable vehicle, just go ahead and bite the bullet and get the good lights. Um, if you have something that can go fast over the terrain, um, especially if you want to drive at night, you, it's, it's imperative that you invest in, in a decent lighting system. Yeah, and um, it's an investment, let me tell yeah. you. Yes, it's, it's, <laughs> it's an investment. These, they aren't cheap, but they aren't cheap for a reason. It's because they're, they're good. So these are the squadrons, right? So squadrons mm -hmm. and then XL80s. Yeah, so I actually bought the squadrons for my uh, rear amber. Okay. And then my buddy was like, you're an idiot don't put those on the back, you're gonna blind everybody behind you. Oh, really? So I'm like, okay, so I put these in the front, because I actually had all these mounting brackets already here, and the wiring is already here. Oh, okay. So I just bolted them up, plugged them in. Wow. And they worked. So let's check out the interior and think. Full windows, tinted, nice. And, oh my lordy, geez Ola, look how clean this thing is. Completely stock dash, like, I mean, you could eat off of this, dude. Like, there's no cracks, no nothing. The Sparco steering wheel. Um, it's got a quick dis disconnect on it. It or? does not, but it's still fully adjustable. Okay, still got so the the full tilt. Room to grow. Heck yeah! You got your you know, your stock uh, blinker and windshield wipers. Yep. Windshield wipers and everything work. Everything works. Oh my god! Yeah. Air conditioning, heat. Heck yeah! So you got um, see some extra gauges over here. Oil pressure tanks, trans temp, your boost gauge, air fuel mix, carpet in here. Oh geez! See, it has the factory Bougie. headliner. Headliner! Oh my lordy! Bougie! Look, it's a nice cage. And I checked, it's even welded on top. It's just so it's 360 welded it too. Is, yeah. So he did a good job with welding it all the way through. Uh, you can just, I can just feel it. How quiet is it in here on the road? It's actually fairly loud, honestly. Oh, really? But not as loud as some other people's trucks. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. if it didn't have this and didn't have the yeah. carpet and stuff, it'd be right. much more loud. No, I for mean, sure. you can talk. So yeah. I thought about getting headsets, uh -huh. but you don't need them. Right on, what we got down here? So we got, uh, this is a, like a B&M shifter. Yeah, it's a, I don't know who makes it, but it's a gate shifter. Okay. I got my radio, old school radio here. Okay, and, right and, on. Um, just all my switches, switches for my lights, overdrive off, um, fan, rear tail light. Okay. Um, and that was all there, just which is like really nice. For trans cooler fan. Yep. I had to label them because I had no idea. Yeah, because you didn't know which was what. <laughs> That makes sense. So some old school Mastercraft seats. That's right, and they're super comfortable, so yeah. I don't mess with them. Power windows and locks. You got a full sound system and stuff in here still. Yeah, it totally works. It'll Everything Bluetooth. works. Bluetooth. We listen to the music while we're driving. My lordy, look at this nice cage, man. Looks like it's all one and a half inch. Super tight cage. Super simple. There's still room back here for even if like a big guy like me, I could fit back here. Nice X's here. And if you fold this down pull that little lever right there I think why it's so quiet is we got our oh yeah got dynamat right on so you're hoping that the majority of this truck is covered in dynamat I think it is yeah because uh, I have a spot on the floor where I push my foot down when I get scared and then my foot sticks oh okay so I think it's that black yeah so tar. He, yeah I think maybe at least at least the floor oh yeah no yeah, yeah there's definitely dynamat underneath there that's good that's excellent 
Oh, here's a nice, nice crossbar. So you even have a nice bar here. So um, yeah, when we go to the when race you go seats. to race seats, you can put a tab off of there and have your harnesses for the race seats for back here too. Heck yeah, man. So this thing is just like, it just kind of needs to be finished. Just put some touches on just it. Just put some it. touches on it and it's like years and years of happiness right here. Right here and everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. <laughs> what? A gem this thing is man and I, we really appreciate you taking the time out for us today and, and letting us look it over and and putting it on the old interwebs you know as far as we know this thing really has never gotten any attention no it hasn't and you know track man it just yeah yeah thank you so much guys for checking out this episode if you guys have any questions for vernon uh or even i mean i guess evan could answer some questions too <laughs> you know <laughs> uh hit him up through the dm thank you guys so much again for watching the episode if you guys uh, would comment and share this with anybody who's going to be building a Tacoma or if you guys are interested in building a Tacoma you know uh, this is this is the place to start this is the channel to start share our videos helps us grow um, like subscribe and all that stuff because it helps us to continue to make these videos so thank you guys again you guys have a good one and that's it later dudes <laughs>